Welcome back to our learning course. In this lesson, we will explore something called auto-shaping. It is at the same time a fun part of animal behavior with a lot of cool videos to watch and something that tells us a lot about how learning and behavior work in animals. We have seen in our lessons on instrumental conditioning that shaping is an effective way to train behavior. Unfortunately, it can be time consuming, especially if you have to train many animals for an experiment. Brown and Jenkins in 1968 documented a way in which the animal can be made to train itself, so to speak, which has been called auto-shaping. This discovery was important in practice as it can save a lot of time, even if it only works with some behaviors. It was also important for theories of learning because it showed that a complex, organized behavior can be trained through a Pavlovian procedure. Before the discovery of auto-shaping, many believed that Pavlovian conditioning could result only in simple behaviors like salivation or eye blink. Another reason why auto-shaping was important is that it contradicted the idea that the response must be necessary in order to gain a reward for the animal to earn that response. We talked about this in the lesson on contingency and contiguity. Let's see what auto-shaping looks like now. I will show you a video from the same behavior for which auto-shaping was discovered, that is, key packing in the pigeon. The goal was to train the pigeon to pack a dot displayed on a touch screen. To do so, the dot was showed on the screen and after a few seconds, food was delivered to the pigeon. You have to repeat this many times, but believe it or not, that's all it takes to teach the pigeon to pack the dot. The pigeon does not have to pack the dot to get the food, but it does so anyway. Let's see auto-shaping in action. We can see that at the beginning, the pigeon does not seem to pay a lot of attention to the dot. You see the dot is on, the pigeon is looking away, but after a few seconds, the, when the dot comes off, the pigeon gets food. At some point, later on, the pigeon takes notice of the dot and starts to get closer and closer to it. Here we see that it started looking at the dot and then it receives food. The next time, the pigeon will look at the dot even more intently. There it is, it seems interested in the dot and then it gets food again. Let's see what happens this next time. You see the pigeon is already standing closer to where the dot is going to appear, and eventually it packs it. First, so first there is interest, then there are tentative movements, and eventually the, the pigeon starts packing the dot. So the important point I want to make once again is that the pigeon did not have to pack the dot for food to come. Food would have come anyway, regardless of what the pigeon was doing. One could say, okay, the pigeon packs even if it's not required, but that's not a big deal. Maybe it just likes packing and it is not losing anything by doing that. This tricky experimental psychologist, however, did not leave it at that and came up with experiments that put packing in conflict with access to food. One of these experiments is the so-called long box auto-shaping experiment. We put the pigeon in a box that is much longer than those normally used, and we put the light on one end and the food on the other. The light still goes on reliably before the food is delivered. And here is what happens. The pigeon starts packing the dot even if it has to run back and forth between it and the food. In fact, it will pack even if the food is available only for a few seconds, and packing means getting less food. We see that the pigeon runs from one end of the box to the other just to pack the dot, just to do something that it doesn't have to do to get the food. Psychologists went even further and actually ran experiments with the poor pigeons where they get food only if they don't pack. This is called an omission training procedure. What will the pigeons do in this case? We know from our class on contingency and contiguity that this is a negative contingency between packing and food delivery. So you get food only if you don't pack. These negative contingencies usually mean that the animal will not learn the behavior. But it seems that pigeons really like to pack. This is a video of a pigeon trained under an omission contingency. It is typical of these experiments that the pigeon packs about half as much as it would pack under a normal auto-shaping procedure. This means many lost food opportunities. 
if you watch closely, it looks like the pigeon is trying really hard not to peck, but nevertheless, it does so at least some of the time. It is like there is a part of the pigeon's brain that understood that not pecking is the right thing to do, but this part cannot fully control the urge to peck. Here we see a close-up of the pigeon struggling not to peck. Let's look now at an empirical finding that gives us a clue about what is happening in autoshaping. Jenkins and Moore discovered in the early 1970s that not all autoshaped packs are the same. To the left of this image, you see a pack that has been autoshaped using water as the reward. To the right, you see a pack that has been autoshaped with grain, that is a solid food. When the reinforcer is water, the pigeon packs gently, has its eyes open, and makes a sucking movement with its beak and throat. When the reinforcer is grain, the pigeon packs forcefully and with its eyes closed. We can see this even more clearly in a video of a replication of the original experiment. Here we see the pigeon pecking for water. As I mentioned, it pecks gently and with eyes open. In the slow motion, you can even see the subtle sucking movement. Here instead is the pigeon pecking for grain. We see very forceful pecks, and in the slow motion, we see the pigeon blinking as it pecks. Maybe you have guessed what is going on. The pigeon is trying to drink from the light when it had been associated with water and to eat the light when it had been associated with food. The sucking movement with slightly open beak is exactly how a pigeon drinks, and the blinking when pecking for food is there to prevent sand and gravel flying into the eye as the pigeon pecks. In other words, what the reward is determines the form of the response that is learned. This is usually what happens in Pavlovian conditioning. See the end of the lesson of instrumental conditioning where we compare the two. The auto-shaping procedure is also Pavlovian because what happens does not depend on what the pigeon does. These two facts together are why auto-shaping is considered a Pavlovian and not an instrumental phenomenon. Many responses other than pecking in the pigeon can be auto-shaped. Most animals will spontaneously approach locations where food appears, whenever this appearance can be anticipated based on some stimulus. For example, in the lesson on Pavlovian preparations, we have considered the case of magazine entry, where an animal inspects the food magazine of a Skinner box whenever we present a stimulus that has been spared with the food. This response is auto-shaped in that it appears spontaneously, without any specific training, exactly like auto-shaped packing in the pigeon. Like pigeons peck spontaneously, other animals can spontaneously do a number of things in auto-shaping. For example, if we turn on a light and then deliver food, a rat will not only check out the magazine, but it will also stand up, called the rearing, in front of the light and check that out. You can even use auto-shaping to train lever pressing in rats more quickly. Let's see how that works. This video that I found is very short and not great quality. So I will just advance frame by frame to show you what's happening. In this frame, we see the lever retracted. In this other frame, the lever is extended into the box. If we insert the lever just before giving food, the lever itself becomes a signal. When the rat notices the connection between the lever and the food, it starts approaching and touching the lever as it would do with actual food. At this point, we can start to deliver food instrumentally, that is, only if the rat presses the lever. This is much easier now, as the rat is already touching the lever spontaneously. In conclusion, in this lesson, we saw that pigeons behave sometimes in what looks like a silly way, doing a lot of unnecessary or even counterproductive pecking, and we saw that other animals can do similar things. We already saw in our lesson on instrumental conditioning that sometimes animals have trouble learning certain things. We will see more examples in the lesson on instinctive drift, while the lesson on how genes guide learning will try to make sense of all these findings, in which animals start doing things that are not rewarded, and even that are mildly punished by the loss of food. This lesson is over. Happy learning to everyone.